first feature, why this story? Um, I've always been fascinated by cults and uh, the whole deprogramming uh, aspect of the, the cult process, like leaving the cult. Uh, it's just so ridiculous that it's these guys who kind of invented this process, uh, didn't really have any formal training in most cases. They uh, would go kidnap adults who were involved with something, but it's their adults, they can do whatever they want to do. They would kidnap them in broad daylight in some cases, take them someplace and lock them in a small room and deprogram them. And just that ridiculous like thought, like thinking that that's actually a thing, it just, I thought it would make it perfect. Where did you hear about this? It's a real thing. I mean, it's a, that was a process that was developed in the uh, mid to late 70s uh, by a man called, uh, named Ted Patrick. And uh, it was a method for helping people at the time when they didn't really, they, there were so many cult things happening and so many people being indoctrinated into cults. They really didn't have any methods for removing people from them. So people just kind of developed, well, if you can be brainwashed, you can be de-brainwashed. And so it was a thing, yeah. Did you meet anyone who actually did it or went through it? I met some people who were, were involved with, um, like for instance, John Grise, one of our actors in the film, uh, was involved with kidnapping somebody for a deprogramming <laughs> and told me this whole story about how he like kind of helped, said he would help somebody do something and then as he like he is in this van all of a sudden and he's in New York at like two in the morning driving down Manhattan, or sorry, in Manhattan and realizing what is going on, what am I doing? And they went and tried to kidnap this man's son uh, and as it went along, like it got crazier and crazier. One of them, he like fought them tooth and nail. The father got punched in the face. Like the guy went down into a subway and locked himself into a closet. And then the transit authority was called and like all this stuff happened. And it was because it's so ridiculous, but at the same time, the parents are willing to do anything to get their kids back. And so you can't fault them for that. But then since then, there have been other methods developed, like exit counseling. They're a little bit more scientifically based. Um, but yeah, for a while, there was this like wild west in cult removal uh, going on. Yeah, yeah. Why did you choose to go with the tone you did? Because I guess I have cults in my head specifically for the horror genre, because it seems like that's kind of like the new thing right now. And I guess this kind of does ha have a horrific element, but also comedy too. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, I like, I mean, I can't really say that I choose the tone because that's kind of just what I like to write. It's the world that I like to live in. Um, but it feels good to me. It feels right. It kind of goes along with the, the types of films I like to watch. Um, but also choosing something that you would think would be darker and putting a comedic uh, edge to it, uh, it subverts expectations. It, it challenges an audience and it kind of says, you think it's going to be about one thing, but you have no idea. And that's what we kind of wanted to do. And how about for the two of you, because it's such an extreme scenario with these crazy characters, is there anything that you can connect to to give you like an entryway? Well, you read a lot about like Ted Patrick, for example. I mean, every character that you play has to come from yourself, so you have to, if you have experiences that align with the character, that's one way in, um, but emotionally, you know, anybody can understand somebody who's had bad things happen to them and uh, Hit, has hit a, a, a bottom in their life, and uh, the interesting thing about this character is, he's, he, he, every time he finds a bottom, he another one appears. You know, so you you, you find the emotional connections. You you do your research, and uh, you, you sort of step into the world and hope that it takes you along with it. Yeah, I mean, for me, um, and I know you did a super cool film, and I also don't want to give away anything, so I, I don't want to be too specific, but um, one of the things that Leland's character says in the film when he's talking about my character is that there's three personalities that she will go through, the before personality, the cult personality, and the after the cult personality, and so kind of going about it that way, I really had to play it at least three different characters within the film, um, and so I had to find my way into each one of those personalities. And so I had, I think, you know, from the beginning of the film, she's this, you really, you really want to feel for this girl, this vulnerable girl who's in this situation who has been preyed upon and brought into this cult, and now she's been preyed upon and taken out of it, and she's being pulled from two sides. And so I wanted to kind of find the vulnerability um, in that, which I can certainly relate to. And, and, think about a person who's, who's at the, that point in their life where they're vulnerable enough to be susceptible to all sorts of things.
us um, yeah. mentally and emotionally. So, um, but then the other personalities uh, do take a, a different form. Is there some sort of through line that lets you do that but keep it a cohesive person? That was the challenging part. That was definitely the, the, the biggest challenge. Um, and there was. I got, you know, I can't be specific about what it was about spilling beans. But, um, but yeah, I, I definitely had to have in the back of my mind what the overarching um, part of the was. Oh, no, did you guys get to shoot in order? Uh, for the most part, yeah, we were pretty chronological. Uh, that helped. Um, we kind of, well, we kind of separated the, the shoot into two parts. There's the parts that happen before uh, they go to the, the motel for the actual deprogramming parts, um, which are all very contained, two, two rooms kind of adjoining. Um, and then there's all the stuff, sorry, and then there's all the motel stuff. So everything that was uh, before the motel stuff and all the stuff that pretty much is exterior, we did first in chronological order uh, relative to those. I'm not making any sense. And then in the motel stuff, all of the motel stuff is in sequential order. So we shot as chronologically as we could, um, I guess, in an indie kind of uh, space. So, but yeah, we had to be very... Uh, Except that we did shoot the, the, the last scene of the film pretty early on, right? The last, right. That, had, that was one of yeah. the last things that we shot in the first section. Right. Of the like the first part of the shoot because it was yeah, great, though. but it was great yeah. and, and so it's nice when that kind of thing works. Uh, I'm glad we didn't have to shoot like the first scene of the movie last or something like that, which would have been another thing. But yeah, yeah. I did quite like that first scene though. Mm -hmm. It almost functions as like its own little short film. Yeah. Like I would just watch that online on yeah. its own. Well, yeah, maybe we'll use that as a trailer instead of a trailer or something. Draw the audiences yeah. in. Yeah. Um, but no, it's it's a scene that means a lot and you don't even think about it when you're writing you, and you're trying to set up all these different things you're just trying to tell like kind of get into his life at that point in time where is he like if you just happen to find out about some guy and you could like watch at any given time he just happened to be in this one place and that's what's happening and uh, it's a little slice of life but it's also sad and funny and, and, and the key to the yeah. character is uh, we realized as we were doing it is is in a line in that scene yes. where uh, yes. my character you says, realize as you were doing it yeah. I have nothing and and he's it's in response to whether he has any money to pay for his meal but uh, it's saying so much you look for that line you know an actor I look for that line how's it for you as uh, your first feature is there anything about going from shorts to this that really kind of surprised you or threw you um I mean I've never done anything for that long like that's the thing we're short by a big bunch of features standards but uh, we were like 18 19 days but uh, and, and my, my sh longest short I had done was a two two day thing so that's the thing is you're not sure if you're up to it like you think well I've done it in this short span of time but am I gonna be like able to do it this whole time you, you, you have a lot of second-guessing in that uh, regard um, this, the, I guess you just you're tired uh, I was editing during the film too so you're tired uh, as you're going through it but you realize how much your body's able to like kind of cope with and your brain is able to readjust and how something kind of becomes normal very quickly and uh, when you're working with people like them and all the crew that we have them, you have that safety net in case that one day you show up and you're not on like, I, there was a big time a scene where there's so many things that had to happen in this one scene and our first AD kind of was going through blocking with me we bring everyone in and he kind of said, okay, and what's our uh, first shot going to be? And, like, brain literally just, like, you don't know, you're like, uh, and he, like, saw immediately, he was like, he was like, all right, cool, everyone, uh, we're good, we're good, we'll come back in a little bit. And he, he was like, totally get it, let's go through. And he set up the system, which he probably used on other films, but I had never used before, where you kind of go through and you say, we're shooting this direction all the way throughout the room because we have so many different ways we need to go. Let's go through order by order and not figure it out as we're going along, but just map it out. And just somebody doing that, something as simple as saying, this is the process we're going to go about it. Uh, it just helps so much. And you get you, you realize why people are there. I imagine that if you're shooting so much of this movie in like a hotel space too, all that coverage, yeah. I mean, it could yeah, get confusing. It gets confusing and it also, I didn't storyboard or anything like that, I don't like to do that, but I do like to have an idea, I do a shot list, um, but on that shot list I'll say close up of Ansel and that can mean a million different things and so you then get in there and you're like, 
what does this person need to be? Where is he at this point? Because I didn't want to manipulate blocking too much, but then once they do have that set up, then it's all static shots for the most part. There's very little handheld in the film, if, it, if at all, in like certain scenes. And uh, you, you have to know that if we're going to stay there, we have to stay there. And every once in a while we can pan with you, but we don't want to overuse things. So it's very complicated. You, you trust a lot of people, again, like the DP, but, but it all works out. And how do you attract such great talent as a first-time director? How do you pitch yourself and your story to them? I, yeah, I don't know what you <laughs> well, I mean, the, the, spe the, script the script speaks for yeah. itself. You know, it's a gem, and that's it. All starts with the script. It's a story. Everything. None of us would be in this business if there weren't storytellers. And you know, then you, you see that, and, and you become part of the process of telling that story. Plus, the producers, Keith and Jess, are, are have extraordinary taste, um, are very charismatic, know how to, um, are very convincing, um, and you know, represent always good material. So they're 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 very good at selling. Yeah, their their work speaks very highly uh, for them. Like they they've done some very distinct movies with the filmmakers that they choose to work with, and I think that helps in bringing in. And they also have a family of cast and crew that they growing. use, which continues to grow with every movie. And we stole from a lot of like we stole from the guest, which Leland is also in, which is playing here. We stole uh, Leland. We stole uh, Lance Reddick. We, um, we AJ Bowen like. They're, they're, they've got a group, a stable of, uh, of actors that we kind of were able to pull from. Yeah, it was good. Was it a given from day one that you had to be in it? <laughs> she had to work. She had to. I had to convince her. She it. sent in like, a few tapes. Bang. <laughs> she was reading the pages as we kind of went along. As I went along, I, I write like pretty much like ten page chunk days. So like I'll do ten pages a day as I'm going, uh, give or take, and after every day I go read these yeah. <laughs> and then she does and then she's like okay great yes really good and she it was just all feeling really well or really really good and and then at a certain point I think I was you kind of say okay you probably shouldn't read anymore until yeah, it's done I, I did stop reading about because like halfway through then you're just like you're kind of rehashing things yeah. over and over again um, but yeah no I knew from day one that she was going to be so it helps that I don't usually write with a voice in mind because especially when you're an indie filmmaker you don't really get to choose necessarily who's going to be because for whatever reasons things happen a certain way so it's not like I'm, you're going to say like well I want so and so to be in this movie you have to write it with the idea of the character in your head and then hope that you can find somebody to bring it to life 